We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Beis Amid Beis Maseches Bavakama. This is Bavakama Daf seventy two B. And the previous Amid the Gemara was going through a different version of the discussion between Rav Chavivi Mechozna to Rav Ashi. The discussion revolved around Rav Yochanan's Shrita that Yeshna Leshrita Mitchila Viatzof. It's called Shrita from the beginning of the process of the Shrita through the end of the process of the Shrita. And so Rav Chavivi says to Rav Ashi, it must be from Rav Yochanan that the prohibition to derive benefit from Chul and Shenishchatu Bazara is not Do Raisa. The Isal Kadaidach Do Raisa. Because if you think that prohibition is Doraisa, so then you're going to run into the following problem. From the moment you shechted a little, so the animal is already Asra Bahana, and Idach, and therefore the rest of the Shrita, let's say you do that Shrita on a stolen animal, Chulin Bazara, so Lav Demar Katavach, so then he's not slaughtering an animal that belongs to its owner, because it's prohibited to get benefit from this animal at that point in time, and therefore there shouldn't be a payment of Dalit Vehe, and our Mishnah says that, that there is a payment of Dalit Vehe in this case. Again, if it's a situation, a person stole the shore, and then he shechted the shore bazar, it's chul and shenishchatu bazara. It says in our Mishnah that there's a payment of dalit vehei, and that would not work if you hold yeshna lechita mitchila viatzof, and that the prohibition of chul and shenishchatu bazara from getting hana from that is a doraisa prohibition. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Rav Acha Brei Derava, Rav Acha Brei Derava said to him, Ki kamechayiv nami ahu porsa, when it comes to having to pay the tashlumi dalit vehei, when you have to pay four or five times the amount, you're also paying on that little bit of shechita. The chi of tashlumen comes just from the beginning of the shechita process, therefore it's no problem at all, because right at the beginning of the process there's a chiv of Dalit Vehei, and that's also the point in time when it's Asr Bahana, but that's not a problem, it's happening at the same point in time. But the, but the Gemara continues again as it did on the previous Psalm, but Amr Ravashi, Ravashi said back to him, Lo Sidchi, don't push it off with this argument, because that's not true. Because in order to be Chayiv Dalit Vehei, you need a Shech the entire animal, it's not just the beginning of the process, you don't have that if it's just the beginning of the process. And so the Gemara says, Alakasha, but then we're back to our question, because again, a According to Rabbi Yochanan, Yeshna Lechita Mitchila Viatsof, if you're going to hold that Chul and Shanishchatu Bazar is Doraisa, you have a problem that there shouldn't be a Chiyav of Dalit Vehei, because again, it's Asr Bahana. By the time there's a Chiyav of Dalit Vehei, it's no longer the original owners because it's prohibited Bahana, and there shouldn't be a Chiyav of Dalit Vehei. And so the Gemara answers, Amar Lehi said back to him, along the same lines of the answer in the previous Amud, Hachi Amar of Gamda Mishmei de Rava, this is what Rav Gamda says in the name of Rava, Ki Ka Mechaev, when do we say that the person here is going to be Chayev the Dalit Vehei, by Chul and Shenishchatu Ba'azara, Kagon Shashachat Mixas Simon and Bachut, so Gemara and Bifnim, that he began shechting the animal, part of the, the pipes that he's shechting in the neck of the animal that starts outside of the Azara, and he only finishes the Shechita inside the Azara, so now at the time he's finishing the Shechita, so it is all at the same time. Time. At the time he's finishing the Shechita, it becomes Asr Bahana, and at the time that he's fin- finishing the Shechita, that's also when he's Chayiv the Dalit Vehei. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Gonav al Pishnaim, if a person steals, and there are two witnesses that testify that he stole, Vitavach umachar al Pian, and then those same two witnesses testify that he either slaughtered or sold the animal, Vinimtsu Zomimin, and then it turns out that these witnesses, they're Adam Zomimin, they're false witnesses, Mishalim and Hakal, so then the Adam Zomimin have to pay everything, meaning they have to pay four, four or five times the amount, because that's what they were trying to get the Ganav to have to pay. Gonav al Pishnaim, let's say he steals, and there are two witnesses that testify that he steals. Vitavach and then he slaughters or sells the animal, and two other witnesses are testifying about that. And so the Mishnah says, Eilu ve'elu nimtsu zomen, if, if both sets of witnesses are found to be false witnesses, harishon min tashlume kefil, the first set of false witnesses that testified about the fact that he stole, they have to pay kefil, the double payment. Ve'achron nimishal min tashlume gimel, and then the other ones, they have to pay three times the amount, because when you pay four times the amount, you're actually paying the kefil, you're paying that double payment, plus another three times the amount. So the first witnesses were trying to to be Mechaivim and Kefel, and the second set of witnesses that said he slaughtered it, they're trying to be Mechaivim another three times the amount. So that's why, again, everyone pays Kasher Zaman, what they were trying to do falsely. So the first set pay Kefel, and the, the latter set pay three times the amount. And the Mishnah continues, Nimtsu Achronim Zomimin. Let's say we find out that just the latter set of witnesses are false witnesses. Hu Mishalim Tashlume Kefel. So then he has to pay Kefel, because the first set of witnesses are accurate. He did steal. He has to pay Kefel. Vehain Mishalim Tashlume Gimel. And they, the false witnesses that said that he slaughtered when he did not, they have to pay three times the amount. And finally, the Mishnah says, Echod min achronim zomimin, if one of the latter witnesses is false, but lo edus shniya. So then that second edus that said that he slaughtered it, that's going to be nullified. Echod min harishonim zomimin, if one of the first set of witnesses is false, that said that he stole in the first place. So but lo kala edus, then all the testimony is, but, is butl, even those who testify that he slaughtered it. Shem ein geneva, because if there was no stealing in the first place, ein tvicha vein mechira, then there's no slaughtering or selling issue as well. And that's why the latter set of witnesses are essentially nullified. 
And Rashi explains, Mishalmin lo esakol, then they pay everything again. This is talking about when it's one set of witnesses that say that he stole and that he slaughtered or sold the animal, then they're going to pay the four or five times the amount. Uva Gemara Muki la Rashi points out that the Gemara will say, Keshehuzmu tchila al hatvicha, that the case is first they were falsified about the fact that it was slaughtered, and then they're falsified about the fact that it was stolen. And then the latter set of witnesses, they pay three times the amount. Again, that's talking about a case when you have one set of witnesses that say that he stole, another set of witnesses that say that he slaughtered, and then you find both sets to be Zomamin, so they pay three times the amount. Lashor, we're talking about for an axe. The case would be that first, again, the latter set of witnesses, they're falsified first. Because Rashi says, similar to what Rashi was discussing in the first Rashi, if you're going to talk about a situation where the Eide Geneva are falsified first, so, so that actually nullifies the testimony about the slaughtering. Because maybe really the owner is the one that sold it to him. So therefore, if they're falsified, why should they pay in that case? You've already said there was no Geneva. And so therefore, the later falsification of that later set of witnesses is not going to cause them to pay. And Rashi continues, if one aid of the Adam that testified that he slaughtered, if that aid is falsified, so then those that set of Adam are nullified, so then he's going to pay Kefal, because the first set of witnesses are still intact. But their potter, the rule is that Adam Zomin don't pay unless both the Adam are falsified. Here, just one of them is falsified. And then finally, if one of the first set is falsified, so everything is bottle, bottle, all the testimony is bottle, for who potter, so he's Potter, he doesn't have to pay anything. Vain Patur, and they're also Patur, they're not considered Adam Zomin, they're just simply nullified. And Rashi says, even if that latter set of witnesses are then falsified later, later on, Ain Mishalman, they still don't pay. Because already their Adis is already nullified, it's already contradicted. Because once we're saying there was no Geneva, there was no stealing, so then there's no slaughtering. On a nullification of an edus, you don't pay anything. You only pay when the false when the edim that come and falsify the first set of edim. If they say imanu hayisem, you were with us. You couldn't have testified about this because you weren't there. You weren't present. So then we say there's a concept of paying kasher zamam what you tried to do. But over here, where the edus was simply nullified because the first set of edim and the geneva were nullified, so that's just considered a nullification of the edus. And then we would say that later set of edim would not pay kasher zamam even if they're later falsified in the typical way of edim zomamin. And Rashi continues, Certainly, let's say the first set of witnesses are falsified first, then certainly the second set of witnesses on the Tvicha will be nullified. However, in a situation where only one of them was falsified, so then both sets are nullified. But if the first set is entirely falsified, so then that first set of witnesses that testified about the fact that he was a Ghanav, that's not nullified. They actually would pay Kefal, they'd be considered like falsified witnesses, like Adam Zomin, and they would pay the double payment that they tried wrongly to make this person pay. And the Gemara continues, Itmar, we have the following, Machlokas Amoroim, Eid Zomin, when it comes to a falsified witness, Abaya Omar Limafreya Hunifsal. Abaya says that retroactively he becomes disqualified, meaning to say, if you say that this particular Eid testified falsely on a particular date, he's now considered a false witness on anything that he testified on subsequent to that date. Rav Omar Mikanu Lahabo Hunifsal. But Rav says, no, it's only from this point in time on that we say he's disqualified. We don't go back to the time that he testified falsely and say anything from that that point in time is a problem. Abaya Amr Abaya says, he becomes, he becomes disqualified retroactively. Because from the moment that he testified falsely, he's a wicked person. And it says in the Torah, a Russia can't be an aid. Rav Amr Rav says, he's only considered disqualified from the point in time that he's falsified and onward because aid zomim chidashu, because the whole concept of aid zomim of, of a false witness is a novel idea. Because really it's two witnesses against two witnesses. The first two witnesses say something happened. The next two witnesses say, Imanu hayisem, you couldn't have known that because you were with us. How do you know to believe the later witnesses? Maybe believe the first ones. My chazis de tzayis lahani, tzayis lahani. Who says to listen to these? Listen to those. Hilkach, therefore, ein lach bo ela mishas chidosh ve'elach. You can only disqualify these witnesses from the moment of the chidosh and onward. You can't go back retroactively and disqualify anything from that earlier point in time. 
And the Gemara continues, Ika Diyami, there are those that say, Rava Nami Kabaya Svirale. Rava actually holds like Abaya. To Amar Lemafreya Hunifsal, and he says that fundamentally there is a disqualification here retroactively. However, Vahacha Hainu Time into Rava, but here the real reason of Rava is, and we'll take a look at Rashi, Lemafreya Nifsal, again, according to Abaya, it's a retroactive disqualification, meaning, Hayyid Benison, let's say he testifies in Nisan, Vahuzamal Edis Zubi Ior, and then in Ior he's falsified about that Nisan testimony. Call her Edius Shahir Bain Time. All of, an, all of the testimonies that he's done between these points in time, meaning from that time in Nisan that he testified falsely and onward, Psulos, they're all disqualified. To Misha Shehayed Edus Zu Nifsa, from the moment that he testified this Edus, he's considered disqualified. Mikanu Lahabam Mishahuzam, but Rava says it's from now onward, from the time that he's falsified and onward. And the full Pasuk is Al Tashis Yodchem Russia, again talking about the fact that you shouldn't join this Russia as an aid. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Gimel Ahmed Aleph.